Uh, gypsum drywall is a very, very old process. It was patented in the late 1800s. It was you know, widely, widely disseminated by 1917. And by the early 1960s, the 1970s, we used lightweight construction of virtually everything we, we built in this country. There's drywall here, there's drywall in your homes, there's drywall everywhere. Uh, but gypsum drywall came out of an era where energy was vir virtually free, a few cents per million BTU. And, uh, and CO2 was not a concern. And so because of that, we designed a process that uses huge amounts of energy. We, in fact, have to calcine it. I won't go through the chemical process, but you have to you know, burn this stuff virtually. And then you mix it into a slurry, and then you dry it again. And you dry it in dryers that are the size of this building. I mean, they're huge. These are multi-story, multi-block, huge dryers. And, and so an average gypsum drywall plant uh, generates a, an approximate amount of CO2 equivalent to about 65,000 cars on the road. There's 85 drywall plants roughly active in the country today. So there's some stats you didn't know right out of industry, of an industry we don't even pay attention to. And by the way, that's natural gas. There's a few people in this room who before this thought natural gas was really clean. It is a fossil fuel. It generates CO2 like other things do as well. So it's a stunning line. It's right in California, by the way. We manufacture this in California. It's 80% less uh, total embodied energy, 80% less CO2. And there's no calcining and there's no drying. It literally comes out of a mixer and goes on a line. You walk up to it like 30 seconds later and it's hard. It cooked itself. It is amazing technology. This is a, you know, a suite of PhDs who know much more about material science than I ever want to know. Uh, and they're brilliant. Uh, Paul's been to see the line. It's, it's pretty stunning to watch this happen. So uh, that's one of the things we went after on that 12%.